first founding sisters, the three of us, yeah. and um, uh, you've probably spoken to the others, Sister Geraldine, Sister Timothy, yeah. and, and Milpera was, um, well the first part of it was finished in 1960, mm -hmm. but was, um, that was finished but the whole project evolved. We just heard about Milpera that there were at this new school on six acres. Mm -hmm. And we were <clears throat> really wanting to get out there and see what it looked like, you know. Mm -hmm. And of course, when we went out there, this huge property and just this big building, which really only had three classrooms in it, were mm -hmm. classrooms that would hold up to 70. Wow. And I remember <clears throat> when, we were, when uh, someone was talking to a high school teacher and he was asking about the capacity of the rooms, mm -hmm. and somebody said it would hold 70 or 72. Mm. Oh, he said, that really comes in a classroom, you know. Mm. But at any rate, <clears throat> I mean, we had that was your class yeah. when we started. Uh, well, we had, and were um, you teaching there? Or you were... Yes, we were all teaching. You just mm. had to teach whatever subjects needed to be taught. Yeah. Even if you, <laughs> I, was, um, I was the science uh, person, mm. and science had only come in as a compulsory subject that year mm. and it had to be taught and I'd been to, we went to some classes on a Saturday mm. with high school teachers to learn science because I'd never done science, mostly wow. girls hadn't done science in those years yeah. and um, we didn't have a laboratory so uh, but, Anyway, we got out of it without any big explosions <laughs> or things. Nothing blew up. <laughs> <laughs> we made use of, the, you know, whatever space there was to do the um, tests and all the rest of it. And then um, I was moved to other places mm -hmm. and I came back to Morpera in um, 1976 as the principal. And I was there for two years as principal. Okay. And of course the whole place, of, you know, the population from 132 was 600 plus, you know. Wow. So it was a um, huge growth in that time. Okay. And um, school had been going, what, uh, 10, 16 years then. Wow. So, um, yes. And There we were in the beginning mm. <coughs> with three sisters mm. and 130 girls mm. and it was quite a big area 
So everybody got practicing polishing those floors <laughs> and uh, organising, you know, the cleanliness of the school and whatever. And, we and had, these floors, these were the ones in the old pattern. The floors in the old hall, the wooden floors. Yeah. Is that what you mean? Okay. That highly polished wood. Yeah. All the floors, and then I think there was lino up the corridors. Okay. But um, anyway, uh, the girls got practicing domestic science. Even if it wasn't a subject thing. <laughs> <laughs> so you you would say the lessons were practical? I oh, yes, right. Practical yeah. lessons in that. No merit for it. Yeah. And then of course the building would have been going on at the same time because um <clears throat> that went on, they built the second another building with two stories. Okay. And uh, oh, later there was a science block, all the rest of it, you know. And then the convent was finished in two years. Okay. And before that, we when we started, we lived at Central Bankstown, mm -hmm. and we travelled out by bus every day mm -hmm. to school. Mm -hmm. uh, the girls were on the same bus, so mm -hmm. it was also a bit of a behaviour check as well. <laughs> <clears throat> and. Uh, and then we moved to Panania mm -hmm. for 12 months and mm -hmm. Father Landers, his name's probably come up, yes, wonderful yeah. priest down there, mm -hmm. he was so thrilled about the school being built because mm -hmm. his school was one of the ones to come up with. Mm -hmm. And um, he drove us to school every morning mm -hmm. and he'd take us for a route around to show us a bit more of the place, you know. Yeah. And um, mm -hmm. so we also had to... Um, try and raise some money so we had an annual fate mm -hmm. and so one of the things we did there were all vegetable gardens around at that time yeah. and um so father drove us around and we go in and see these people and ask them if they give us donations for the fate so uh, we'd have these people lined up you know mm -hmm. to help um, promote the um, fate and raise some money another little sideline of that i don't know whether anyone else has mentioned it, when we did have the fete, <clears throat> it would be perhaps a Saturday or whatever, mm -hmm. and um, the first fete, we went off home to uh, Central Bankstown where we were living, mm -hmm. and um, Sister Geraldine had a team with all the money in it. Okay. And it was very hot whatever time of the year we had it. Mm -hmm. And uh, so she had her bedroom door open and kept it open to get a breeze with the tin of money. <laughs> so <laughs> practical again. <laughs> yes. <laughs> you know, it was sort of a different world. You didn't go and find a safe to lock it up in. No. Oh, well, you'd be involved and it was a bit unusual. I mean, you were starting a secondary school in Sydney. Yeah. Even though it was out sort of west in the west, mm. and um, <clears throat> you know, we we certainly had the school which grew and grew, and the order built the school, mm. built a number of schools for the western parts of Sydney, mm. and um, um, you know, you had to be practical and have money for things. We didn't have any books when mm. we started. You know, we had three empty rooms, three with desks in them, and that was it. Yeah. So we gradually, we used to go off shopping into the city, to Pellegrini's, mm. to buy books and, uh, mm. and, you know, for the school. And, and we didn't have a car. Mm. Uh, we just, you know, um, Sister Geraldine had a friend, Annette, mm. who was very good and she drove us mm. a lot. Mm. But, um, <clears throat> You know, when you think of how you had to start off mm. with 130 girls and, and not much to start with, mm. and then I think we all had friends among the sisters where we called on them for any resources they might have had mm. to spare. But it was a great year. The first year was a great year. Mm. And uh, the girls, um, you've probably seen the photos of the uniforms yeah. with the, and they were called the Dotty Girls. Yes. <laughs> And, uh, you know, how did the, um, the <coughs> uniform come about? 
Well, I'm not sure about that because none, none, not, none of the three of us had any say in that. Oh, okay. um, must have been decided by the local people or yeah. whatever this blue and white for Dotty girls. Yeah, but it certainly was uh, quite striking. Oh, <laughs> yes, that's right. And we were sort of known by that. And of course, then we had Sister Geraldine was very particular about we had the, um, you know, stockings and the white gloves and, mm -hmm. and the winter uniform was really lovely, the blue mm -hmm. serge. Mm -hmm. And Sister Maureen McKinley, mm -hmm. she designed the um, badge for the school. Ah, the school logo. Yeah, put on the arm of light. Oh. She was um, taught at the um, Teachers College in St. Services in North mm -hmm. Sydney. She actually came from Western Australia. Oh. And so she designed that. And um, and on the basis of that, mm -hmm. um, Sister Timothy mm -hmm. and I composed the school song. Mm -hmm. um, so um, I wrote the words and she wrote the music. <laughs> <laughs> and with the school song, did that take long to? Did it take a long time to put the song together? Or oh, no, we had to have it ready as soon as we could. Ah. In the Rimini Arma Luchus yeah. is the motto we uphold. <laughs> yes, so it's, I think they still sing it. We, it? Yeah, absolutely. It's definitely still <clears> sung <throat> with, with great um, gusto. Yeah. <laughs> and we had no piano or musical instruments. But uh, I had been um, given or lent um, a piano, piano accordion. Mm. And um, I sort of, um, I wanted to just, well, I played the piano, but I hadn't played that, so I learned how to play. Anyway, we didn't have any music, so somehow I got the piano accordion, mm -hmm. and Sister Timothy, I showed her a few things, and she picked it up quickly. Mm -hmm. And we did all the um, musical part with that for accompaniment. And we put on a, a play, um, what do you call it? Um, like the the operator. Operator. Mm -hmm. Gypsy made, I think. Yeah. Anyway, we had that um, for our first concert. We had our concert in the Bankstown Town Hall. Wow. And uh, that was quite immense. I mean, we had a lot of um, a lot of enthusiasm. Yeah. Um, uh, and we were all young. I mean, um, Sister Geraldine was only about thirty-five or something, and I was thirty. And, the other sister was about in her early 20s. So, you know, we were very young and um, had plenty of enthusiasm. Mm -hmm. And then we got into those marches that physical culture lady ran, mm -hmm. and we didn't have anywhere to practice except to get out on the road. Mm -hmm. And it wouldn't even have been um, academised for that. It was mm -hmm. just a rough ride. And so we take, and she'd come, mm -hmm. is, and she'd have a little car. And she'd be driving along and, and um, swing those arms on. And then uh, we'd be walking beside the girls. We'd walk and yeah. did all this marching practice. Mm. And we won them march nearly every year, I think. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, just things that uh, happened. Yeah. It, it would probably be quite striking having all the girls walk alongside the them. Thirty of them, yeah. yeah. <laughs> And there wasn't much traffic, you see, in those days. Yeah. It was rather a remote part. <laughs>
religious principles and um, yeah. So faith, faith being really faith thing. being the purpose that you were there, yeah. and um, you know, and a good faith-filled education. And I guess by faith, you know, the, would it be you're wanting the girls to go out into the world with that faith? As well? That's right. And that's you know, it's the um, spreading of the faith by the way they live and give the example and yeah. carry it on with their own families. And How they treat others. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. All that, you know, needed to uh, be obvious. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. 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 So I guess your, your hope would be that, um, like that the faith continues, but that also the, um, the girls are <coughs> joyful, like they enjoy it as yes, well. Yes, that they, uh, you know, um, yes, that their faith was nourished and mm. Uh, they realised how privileged they were to have their faith and have it nourished there in a Catholic setting. Mm. And um, and also that the teachers that come on, you know, I mean, the spirit has to be kept alive by them. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. So I think uh, to... Like there's okay, there's got to be discipline, but there's got to be a lot of joy. Mm. Yeah, but you joy know, is important. The whole spirit of, um, of knowing what they're about and mm. joining in and generosity mm. and all that. It is. Yeah, we certainly see it. Like the girls have such big hearts that um, they just want to share their love, mm. you know, with others. Yes, um, <coughs> and they need to be able to communicate. Mm. Uh, it's such an essential part, um, especially teaching the young people how to listen. Um, In this world today, very few people want to listen. Yeah. Yes. But um, it's a lifelong enough process. Yeah. You can learn the knack, but you have to <laughs> keep on practicing it. That's true. That's very true. People want to talk, mm. but if you observe, um, they're not so keen on listening. Yeah. I'd say, yeah. So, yeah, and listening is definitely important. Exactly. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> In the women here, armor leeches. Put on the armor of light. Mistake girls can do anything.